Hey guys, welcome to another episode of VTech Academy. You're about to get schooled. Well, we're getting ready to do a lot of rear disc conversions on a couple of our project cars. We're gonna do a rear disc conversion on our project back marker. We're also gonna do a rear disc conversion on our budget EG. And we're gonna do a rear disc conversion on our Project Accord. Now, uh, we're gonna to talk today a little bit about rear trailing arms and disc brake conversions for EG, EK, and EF. Everybody knows what you want is the trailing arms off a 94 to 2000 Integra. Those things will bolt right on, the geometry is the same, and that's the perfect setup for doing a budget uh, rear disc conversion. Now, I've been looking at a lot of the salvage yards recently, trying to find some of that stuff. And I'll be honest with you, it's uh, not as abundant as it used to be. And people grab that as soon as it comes in the salvage yard. What I have been finding though, is a lot of 90 to 93 Integra ones. Most people don't like using those, and here's why. When you use the 90 to 93, it actually widens the rear track. If you look at our two trailing arms over here, we have one off an EK, one off a DA, and if we measure the height of the surface where the spindle actually bolts, you'll notice that the one on the DA Integra is about a half inch taller. That means it's actually gonna widen your rear track about an inch. Now that's not a big deal if it's a street driven car and you're just trying to do a rear disc conversion to, you know, for the look. Uh, but it is gonna be a problem if you are gonna be road racing your car. If you're gonna be road racing your car, you wanna maybe put a wider tire on it you're gonna wind up having to have a greater offset in order to get that tire on there. But a bigger problem is it actually widens the rear track, which makes the rear end more stable. And that's not how you wanna drive fast in a front wheel drive car. You want it a little bit loose. Uh, as a matter of fact, when we built our Time Attack DA, we actually took EF rear trailing arms to put it on to narrow the rear end. That actually allowed us to run a larger tire. Uh, and at the same time, uh, it narrowed the rear end and uh, made the car a little bit looser coming into corners and made it handle better. Now, you can actually use the 92-93 Integra rear trailing arms. Here, let me show you what I'm talking about. What I've done is taken the rear spindle off of this Integra trailing arm. I've also removed the dust cover and the hub so you can see what's going on. This normally bolts right on here like this. And then the cover's on there and then the caliper bolts right here. But it's not terribly hard to take these things off. There's a 24 millimeter nut right here. And then there are four T50 Torx screws that are in here. Now they're actually Loctited in there, so it's a little bit to try to take them off, but uh, with the proper tools, not a big problem. Anyway, once I had this off, we then grabbed our EK trailing arm, stripped it down as well, and as you can see, it bolts right on, and all four of our holes line up to bolt it down. So now we have essentially recreated the uh, DC2 rear trailing arm with disc brakes. And honestly, it was a lot easier than I had originally expected and a heck of a lot easier than trying to find DC2 trailing arms these days. Anyway, that's been your quick tip for today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you like what you heard, hit the subscribe button down below. And uh, also, if you could, take a trip on over to vtechacademy.com and check out some of the cool t-shirts we have. Thanks for joining us.